Congratulations, you're finally ready to fly to your dream institute. Let's run through some important points that will make your transition to your new life easier. After obtaining your student visa, remember the following steps. Inform the institute that you're attending the institution and let them know that you have procured your student visa. Make sure you have taken all the vaccinations required by your institute. In general, most institutes require the MMR, which is the measles, mumps and rubella, and the Mantu skin test for tuberculosis. Hepatitis B, although not required, is strongly recommended. Take one shot immediately, one after one month, and the last shot at the university health center itself, which is generally taken six months after the second shot. You can also take vaccinations such as meningitis, tetanus, and so on. These vaccinations are generally optional, but if your institute asks for them, be sure to take them. Most institutes will have a health form that your doctor needs to fill, sign and certify. Buy student health insurance either at the institute you are studying or from an external insurance provider. Some countries such as the UK provide automatic insurance cover after having lived in the country for a period of six months. If you need to buy health insurance, I highly recommend you buy it from the institute itself as the policies are more reliable and are cashless. Book your air ticket as soon as possible. Seats in peak season fill up very quickly. Choose airlines which allow you an extra bag based on your student status. You can take around $4,500 in a prepaid Forex card and around $500 in cash. The balance fees can be obtained in the form of a demand draft and taken with you or you can even transfer the funds to the university. In most cases, you do not need to mail the fees to the university earlier. If your parents or guardians will not be handling your financial affairs in your absence, arrange for an appropriate power of attorney for the person who will be taking care of your affairs. You do not need something called an income tax clearance certificate before you leave India. Similarly, you do not need ECNR to travel to developed countries. Visit your doctor and dentist before you leave. Remember, dental treatment is very expensive overseas. And so you must have a dental checkup before you leave. Also arrange for an eye examination so you can carry an up-to-date prescription in case you need to replace your glasses or contact lenses. Prepare a shopping list and buy all the things you may need and can carry. Check with your airline the exact bag and weight specifications. Let me tell you now about the academic system followed in the US and Canada. In North America, most institutes follow the semester system. The fall semester starts in August and the spring semester starts in January. An academic year is nine months and the summer terms are between May and August. Some universities have begun to adopt a quarter system, hence the university has three quarters comprising of an academic year, August, December and March. Students take courses based on credits. Most undergraduate students need 120 to 140 credits to graduate and most graduate students need 32 to 60 credits to graduate. The US education system does not use percentages like India, but instead has a GPA or grade point average system. The table shows the grading system where A equals 4, B equals 3, C equals 2 and D is 1 point, F is 0 points. Undergraduate students must register for a minimum of 12 credit hours per semester and graduate students 9 credit hours. Every subject you register for is calculated by the credits. For instance, if you enroll for 4 classes in the first semester and they are Business Law, Introduction to Computer Science, English 301 and Physics 1. Assume each course has 4 credits assigned. Thus, the total is 16 credits 4 times 4. At the end of the semester, you get the following grades. Business Law A. Introduction to Computer Science A. English 301 B. Physics 1 B. Thus, you get a total of 16 points for Business Law, 16 points for Introduction to Computer Science, 12 points for English 301 and 12 points for Physics 1, giving you a total of 56 points. To calculate the GPA, simply divide 56 by the total number of credits taken, which was 16, and therefore your final GPA is 3.5. 
Note that some universities follow the A plus system where A plus equals 4.3 points and the scale is separated by 0.3 units. Other countries including the UK, Spain, Australia generally don't follow the GPS system. Things to do during your first weeks. Your first weeks at the university are very important and busy. There are a number of things you must do before classes begin. The following list will help you organize your time and remind you as to what has to be done. 1. Check in with the International Student Services Office or the International Admissions Office. Take all your immigration documents with you, your I-20, visa letter, passport. All new students must report to this office as soon as they arrive on campus. 2. Attend the International Student Orientation Program. 3. Apply for a Social Security Number. Students who intend to work on campus at US institutes must have a social security number. Ask your orientation advisor for more information on how to apply for an SSN. Institutes in other countries may require you to apply for special permission to work on or off campus. If you are not staying on campus, then you will need to look for a place to live. 5. Take the Oral English Proficiency Test and a Math Test if required. Most institutes have some English language proficiency and math tests and international students generally take this test once they arrive on campus. 6. Meet your academic advisor. All students are assigned to an academic advisor from the department where they are studying. Your advisor will help you plan your academic program, select courses and advise you on other important academic issues. And 7. Finally, register for classes. A personal shopping list. The anxiety of studying abroad lands up in excessive shopping. So before you go to shop, make a list of what you actually need. I'll tell you how we should divide the list. First, clothing. The dress code on campus is informal and the t-shirt is worn with jeans and that's the universal code for both sexes. So take lots of them. Formal clothes may come handy occasionally, but if you want to take Indian clothes with you, you should because institutes abroad have at least one Indian cultural function per year. Carry a jacket and a couple of sweaters. An umbrella might be a good idea as well. 2. Footwear. One pair of each. Casual shoes, sneakers, formal shoes and bathroom slippers. No matter where you'll stay, you'll have access to washing and drying facilities. These machines have large capacities so that it is possible to do one to two weeks laundry at a time. So plan your wardrobe accordingly. Third, undergarments. About 12 to 14 sets of undergarments and preferably cotton socks. Fourth, linen. Bed sheets, you can take a double size, pillow covers. And finally, miscellaneous items such as towels, napkins, belt, handkerchiefs. Indian clothes, particularly cottons, have a tendency to shrink when washed on the hot and in warm cycle in a washing machine or drying them in a dryer. So be careful with sizes and quality of the fabric of clothes that you buy from India. The following things are best bought abroad. A winter jacket, winter gloves, caps, wind sheeters, track suits, good sweaters, blankets, comforters. Now let's talk a little bit about the kitchen and food items. Food is not a problem for either vegetarians or non-vegetarians. Although if you're a non-vegetarian, you will have more choices. There are lots of eating joints abroad providing Indian, American, Mexican, Oriental foods. But it would be cheaper and healthier to develop some culinary skills. If you plan to stay in an apartment, go well armed with your pots and pans, your favorite masalas and some recipes. If you plan to live off campus, carry the following. Cooking utensils, which would include a non-stick pan, non-stick tawa, a large pressure cooker, couple of stainless steel stuff like plates, spoons, fork, glasses. Since all the cooking range have a flat surface, carry only flat bottom vessels. You can buy a small dinner set which is microwavable, consisting of small and large plates, soup bowls, cups and a set of good knives abroad itself. Though you can get all kinds of Indian food stuff abroad, it's good that you carry a reasonable quantity of the following to last you for your setup period. Condiments and spices, pickles, homemade snacks, papad, anything else that you wish to carry. Custom officers abroad generally don't make a fuss about spices if they're properly sealed. So pack everything to be leak proof. Do not get fresh fruits or meat as the custom laws prohibit them. 
If you're carrying a reasonable quantity of cooked food, you're going to face no problem with customs. But if you're going to carry 5,000 theplas with you, you're going to get into trouble. Remember, the easiest way to make new friends is to feed the existing Indian food-staffed population with desi delicacies and sweets. So if there are any specialties from your place, carry them with you. Personal items. Get the following for your first few days or weeks if you want. But just that much and not more. Toiletries like your toothbrush, toothpaste, tongue cleaner, soap, hairbrush, a complete shaving kit. You can buy shampoo, talcum powder, hair oils and other items abroad itself. Medical. Carry some medicines that you have used for minor ailments like fever, cold, cough, etc. Antiseptic cream and any special medicine that you need. If you have dental or eye problems, definitely have them checked in India itself. If you're wearing eyeglasses or contact lenses, carry a spare one and don't forget to get the eye prescription too. Remember, you must have prescriptions of any medicine that you carry. A few other items such as needles and thread, buttons, sports equipment, if you play tennis, squash, soccer, family photos, Indian ethnic such as gifts, religious deities if you are religious minded, entertainment, your favorite Indian music, western books. Remember, don't carry music or videos which is pirated. Don't buy electrical appliances from India as the voltage and frequency used abroad are different. For example, 110 volts in the US as compared to 240 volts in India. And in any case, appliances like iron toasters, etc. are quite cheap abroad and you can purchase them once you've settled in. Books and supplies. Textbooks are extremely expensive abroad and a single textbook might cost you more than a month's grocery bill. Due to the diverse fields that you all are in and since the professors there choose their own textbooks, it's impossible for me to compile a list of textbooks that you might need. However, if there are some books that you consider standard reference, you can buy them. Although stationery is not that expensive, it would be useful to buy the essential stuff that will get you started at your institute. Some of these would include things like a calculator, micro tip pencils, good pens, eraser, staplers, Indian calendars and most importantly a good backpack. Don't get the punch hole, as in most countries, the two-hole puncher is not used. Driving. Learn driving, but don't bother with the international driving permit. Instead, get a local license in the country where you're studying. Even if you don't plan to drive right now, it's best to have a driving license as you can use it for ID. And when you eventually do drive, you will have a clean record of it on your driving license, thus making your insurance cheaper. Plagiarism. If you're caught, even looking at another person's answer sheet while taking an exam, you will be suspended for plagiarism. You cannot copy material from the internet and try to pass it off as your own. You must credit and quote any text that is not your original work. In the academic world overseas, plagiarism is taken very seriously and do not, under any circumstances, try to take the easy way out and copy something. The consequences are severe and you will be suspended from your institute. Copyrighted material. Do not photocopy copyrighted material and do not, under any circumstances, try to sell copyrighted material bought cheap in one country and sold for profit in another. For example, don't try to buy cheap textbooks in India and sell them online in the US. While this may seem profitable, it's against the law and if you are caught, you will be arrested and deported. Similarly, if you try to download movies and music and then try to sell them online, you will be in deep trouble. Remember, you're abroad to study and not to make a quick buck. Alcohol and sex. The legal drinking age in countries such as the US is 21 and it's a very serious offense to buy alcohol using a fake ID. If you're caught with a fake ID, you will be arrested and possibly deported. I want to talk to you about something very important, consent. Consent is critical and never forget that a person who is under the influence of alcohol is not capable of giving consent. Hence, however tempted you may be, having sex with a person who is not capable of giving consent will be called rape. Be careful with the kind of people you associate with and the kind of relationships you have. Finally, remember you're starting a new life. While maintaining your culture, integrate in the society where you're living. My best and most valuable advice to you is be yourself and be open to different experiences. Be open to the fact that you're going to meet people who are very different from you. 
be true to yourself but respect other people's opinions and don't judge too quickly you're going to have a great time you're going to become a better version of yourself you're going to make your family and friends proud and i wish you all the best